they walk in that room, they become yours. And you got this, this energy inside your soul that says, I am the number one determinant of the success or failure of my students. Hey, y'all, when you get back, kick some butt. I'll see you in the winner's circle celebrating your victory. Let's go, 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 let's go. Let's do this, let's do this, let's go, let's go. Thank you, everybody. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week 207 of the AP in New Principles Academy. Let me see who's checking in this morning. We got right up at the top of the list. We got Sharon Wright checking in from Brooklyn, BK. We got Mona Obamolak in the building. And she says good morning to the queen as well. We got um, AP Patrick Lawrence in Connecticut. Grace Castaneda in Kyle, Texas. AP Patrick Lawrence is checking in. She also said, or I mean, he also said uh, greetings to the queen as well. Ricardo Giannis, my man, is down there in Houston. Marsha Post, San Diego. Constance Sherrod down in Mississippi. Takesha High in Virginia. Rodney Richardson, Hampton, Virginia. Solomon Bazue. I know I pronounce, mispronounce your name every week, Solomon. You got to forgive me for that, man. You got to send me the phonetics. Uh, and that's Junior. He said, I'm going to, into the home stretch of my first year as AP, and I'm better because of you. Thank you, Principal Cafele, man. Blessing. That's I, I need that, and 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 I don't take that lightly. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, Lysandra Brackens is down in North Carolina. My man Otis Kitchen the second down in Florida. James Wilburn is in the building. Uh, Arlette Johnson, Connecticut, AP Assistant Principal of the Year 2023 is in the building. If you missed our conversation, which was about about two weeks ago, make sure you go to the YouTube channel AP and New Principals Academy and check it out. It was powerful. We got uh, Tashika to uh, to Truesdale in Atlanta. Michael Michael Benton in Cincinnati. Sheree Washington Moulton is in the building. John Herricks. Jacqueline Harriet up there in Nova Scotia, Canada. You know, I'm getting ready to be in Alberta, Edmonton. Uh, Jacqueline, uh, I got a flight as soon as I get off of this thing today. So I got, I'll be flying until, until midnight. That's what it is. Montreal and then over to Alberta. There's the queen. It's in the castle, in 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 the castle, right? Y'all know how we do, right? Kimberly Broughton Kafele is here. You got Dr. Sheikah Houston in the building, man. She was just on, man, with Dr. Tammy Taylor throwing down ten thirty. You know, we we always said the Fantastic Four, but the but the fourth ain't been coming on lately. So I I turned I changed it, man. I didn't even tell my colleagues, but y'all heard me every you hear me every Saturday. We call it Super Saturday, Super Saturday, ten o'clock. Sean Hurt followed up by. She, Dr. Sheikah Houston, Dr. Tammy Taylor at 1030 and then 11 o'clock, really 1055. So I could do these shout outs. Yours truly, Principal Cafele, Super Saturday. I don't know where else that you would want to be on a Saturday morning when you got all this free, free, free leadership information going out here, for leadership professional development going out here. What, what else are you going to do, man? If you in leadership, this is the only place to be. Super Saturday. We ain't just Saturday. We super Saturday, right? So when 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 Josh comes back online, I don't know how we are gonna go back to Fantastic Four, man. Because I like Super Saturday. Maybe we call it Super Fantastic Four. But anyway, we got our uh, Dr. Rella Hicks in the building down there in Augusta. We got Renee Joy, Tennessee. Rashad Davis, Vegas. Haley Couch is out there in Oklahoma. I see you. That's my milk and sister. Stacey L. Joy, we finally met, man, last Saturday. I was in Los Angeles, and she was there, man. She was there. And thanks for that video, too, uh, Stacey. Good to see you. Good to meet you. Glad you're here. September, Devon Vance Daniels in the building. Principal Dr. Tammy Taylor's here. I'm getting ready to close it out, y'all. I see Kimberly Wilson Daniel 
is in the building. If y'all don't have a book, you better get it. I got it sitting right on the table over there. And uh, I wrote an endorsement on the back cover. She signed her autograph on the inside, man. So I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I see you, Ronald Pugh. I see you. I see you. I see you, Arcella Austria. I see you, Albert Buckles. I see you, MPA Jaguar. That's Josh Tovar in the flesh. I see you. All right, I'm closing out, y'all. I'm look, I'm just looking for. Let me find one of them local Jersey homies. If I see somebody, if I see somebody, where you at, Jersey? I don't see you. I don't see you. All right, I got to close it out. But I got to shout out Yolanda McKinney every time I see her name because she's been rocking since day one, man. This is week 207 consecutively. I always say that to y'all consecutively, right? That speaks to my commitment. That speaks to my dedication, right? So, uh, so where I don't see no Jersey homies, man, with y'all. Oh, yeah, I see one. Here we go, Lou Saunders. I see you, Lou Saunders. I'm going to close on you. Good to see you, Lou Saunders, Jersey in the building. Other than that, y'all, let's get it rocking. And let me say formally now to everybody, good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 207 of the AP and New Principles Academy. And let me tell you something. Y'all already see I'm hype and you see what I'm rocking, right? Don't, don't the new people don't be like, oh, he must be a Dodgers fan. You ain't see the bottom, man. Let me get this on the screen, man. You ain't see that 42, baby. This ain't no LA Dodgers jersey. This is Brooklyn Dodgers. This is Jackie Robinson. April 15 on Monday. So you know every Jackie Robinson weekend, I got to rock Jackie. So I'm rocking it today. We put the Negro League jersey to the side. But you remember last Saturday, if you weren't with me, I was rocking that Kansas City Monarchs number five Jackie Robinson jersey. See, he ain't start off with the Dodgers. He was, in terms of professional, he started off with the Kansas City Monarchs Negro Leagues, right? So you already see I'm hype, man. So, so let me just say to you, in case you didn't hear me, in case you don't realize it, in case you don't sense it, Here's how I feel, because I want you to feel like me, even if there's stuff going on and you a little un, little stressed, a little frustrated over certain things, but we're going to bring that out of you too. But for now, in this moment, in real time, I want you to take this with you. I'm on fire! Woo! Yeah! That's how I feel. See, I was in that, that meeting room in L.A. last week. I couldn't give you the real thunder, man, because, you know, they beat uncalled the fire department. It's a guy in the other room yell fire. Yo. So but I'm home now, man. If they hear me outside, that's their problem. Right. So. So, look, let's let's get to the rundown, man. Bring it down. Kefele. Bring it down. A hey, shout out to the massachusetts school administrators association man i was up in boston well actually worcester massachusetts man and man you know i had a good time man we talked leadership for i don't know how many hours man all morning right but you know what was interesting i did the keynote right and then you do the breakout so you know you lose the people and the ones that just want to hear you a second time they stay so we took a 10 minute break after that 10 minute break, it's time to start. So I walked in the room and it was packed. So I'm like, y'all got to get to them breakout sessions. They said, we here. <laughs> y'all ain't going to the session. Nah, we here for you. I felt bad for the other presenters because if I'm one of the breakout presenters, everybody stay for the keynote. I'm like, yo, what I come out here for? But they were hungry, man. Shout out to anybody out there from the Massachusetts School Administrators Association. I appreciate y'all, man. If this is your first time on, don't let it be your last time. But go to the YouTube channel, AP and New Principles Academy, and catch up on where you what you missed out on. That means you missed 206 powerful dynamite sessions. Secondly, shout out to Deep Creek Middle School in Baltimore County, Maryland, man, under the leadership of Principal Tom Baker. Man, we had a great we we spent the whole day together man this week the other day what 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 a time we had then did the night session with the parents man had just had just had a great time baltimore county so shout out to both those of you that may be watching up in alberta canada edmonton i see you first thing tomorrow morning man i'm bringing that jersey jersey city fire with me man 
when I when I had the meeting with them, they even said to me, they said, bring the fire. I'm like, you ain't got to tell me that. Right. You That's the one thing you ain't got to tell me. I'm bringing flames. Right. So I see you all in the morning. Um, Let's go. School Leadership Institute with Principal Gafele. This is um, I don't know how many of these we've done. Like we get we getting close to 10 annual. But uh, School Leadership Institute with Principal Gafele, July 9 and 10, Houston, Texas. This is not me coming to some conference to speak, some school district to speak. This is y'all flying in to join me in Houston. So join me in Houston, July 9 and 10 for two big days. Ain't no other speakers and nothing like that. It's just me and you in the room, right? So um, go to principalcafele.com, scroll down to um, where it says Principal Cafele Announcements, and you'll see it sitting there right on the top. Click the uh, Click the link and register get your seats down because we gonna sell out get your seats now and then i'll see you in houston on july 9 and 10 and then the next the, the, not the next week but the week after join me back in houston for the black educators rock conference right i don't use i don't push all the conferences but i'm i'm i'm, I'm like on the board right it's my conference right so july 18 through 21 we're gonna be in houston I do a leadership seminar to wrap up the conference on the 21st on a Sunday, always on a Sunday, all day long. We just talk in leadership, probably instructional leadership. So you can go to the principalcafele.com and get the information for that too. But you can go to rockconference.org, rock, R-O-C-K, rockconference.org. Join us in Houston for the Rock Conference, um, July 18 through 21. Hey, y'all, for those of you new and you don't know my about my books, this is the book that primarily accompanies the Saturday Academy. So if you don't have the Assistant Principal 50, get yourself a copy. If you don't have my new joint, the Assistant Principal Identity, get yourself a copy. If you don't have the Aspiring Principal 50, get yourself a copy. If you don't have the Principal 50, get yourself a copy. And if you don't have Is My School a Better School Because I Lead It, what am I going to say? Get yourself a copy. So make sure that you go to Amazon or ASCD.org and get yourselves a copy to accompany this, but you don't wanna just watch this and not have the books, man. It's a different, it's, it's just a whole different vibe. So make sure that you get that. And then lastly, uh, make sure you like and follow the AP and New Principals Academy Facebook page. And more importantly than that though, the AP and New Principals Academy YouTube channel. We have 20,700 subscribers, right? 20,700 subscribers. Am I blessed by that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of people, man. You know, the celebrity world, you know, they, they got millions. I ain't no celebrity. I'm just some cat sitting in his house in the, in, in, in the right in the border between the living room and dining room that talks to America's school leaders. No, internationally on Saturday morning. I'm just I'm just I'm just a guy doing his little fraction of of a part every day, every Saturday. So I don't I'm not going to have those numbers. But for me, just being your, your just 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 little old principal Cafele and have 20,000 subscribers. I ain't mad at you. Right. So keep on. See, keep on hitting that subscribe button. Anybody out there that's not a subscriber and then hit that up like those notifications. Let them let sign up with whatever you got to press. Because I, I forget what it is. So that when I come on live, you know about it. Right. Make sure you take care. Take care of that as well. Let me do my monologue real quick, and then I'm going to bring up these two OGs, man. These I got these two powerhouse uh, leaders coming on here today, man. They, if you don't know them, you're going to know them when you meet them because they've been, they've been here for a minute make, making a change, making a difference in the world, not just America, but the world, right? But real quick, y'all, my monologue, uh, you know I do the YouTube shorts every Wednesday. And I'm deciding that I'm going to build on the short on the Saturday when I do the monologue because the short gives me 60 seconds. I'm not that I'm going to do much longer than 60 here, but same title. Do you realize the depth of your influence over the staff and children that you lead? That's my title. Once again, do you realize the depth of your influence over the children and staff that you lead? Here's what I'm saying to you real quick. I want let's let's look at these two words influence and control influence and i'm going I'm to read this defi this definition to you the capacity to have an effect on the character the development or the behavior of someone or something or the effect itself but the main thing here is the capacity to have an effect 
Now let's look at control in terms of just comparing and contrasting. Control, the power to influence or direct be people's behavior or the course of events. Let me say it again. Control, the power, and that's the key word, to influence or direct people's behavior or the course of events. Let me tell you something. You all know this, but I'm just still your, your, your brother from Jersey going to reinforce it. Power has its place. Power has its need. There's a need when you need to exert your power. But when we talk about that school moving forward academically and you become that dynamite school, that high performing school, that blue ribbon school, that title one distinguished school, whatever those various different categories are, you're not. I'm going to say that again. You're not. I'm going to say it one more time. You're not going to get there through your power. You're not going to get there through your authority as leader. You're going to get there through your influence. And you notice in that title, I said the depth of your influence. But your influence is most widely felt when you understand the, 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 the need for you to position yourself in a way that you're embraced. You got to understand the significance of how you position yourself. In the world of sports, specifically football, if, if, if the defense is going to avoid a touchdown from happening through a pass thrown to a receiver down the field, you've got to position yourself to prevent the receiver from either catching the ball or running with it once he catches it. Well, as leader, you've got to position yourself that your staff get hungrier, that your students get hungrier, and that each of the folks in the building want to work together, want to support one another, want to buttress one another, want to lift one another. You've got to make sure that your influence is making that happen. Your influence becomes the glue, becomes the cement to bring the entire community together so we can move as one to the promised land. And what is the promised land in this regard? High academic performance, baby. That's what it is. It's, it's, it's outcomes for young people where, they, where they're given the, the opportunity and yield the possibility to maximize their potential. Imagine being in a school that doesn't help you to maximize your potential because the influence of others in this regard, you, is not there. Woo! It matters. See, I can't get all that in in that 60, that 60 second uh, short, but that 60 second short matters. So make sure you watch the 60 second short every Wednesday. We call it midweek hashtag midweek fire. And then I'm going to build on it on Saturday mornings. That's how that's, that's how we rolling with this. Hey, y'all, I got I got guests today, man. I'm going solo, by the way. Our fourth anniversary of this platform is the first Saturday in May, May 4th. I'm going solo that day, man. So make sure that you put that on your calendar. I'm going solo and I'm going off, right? That'll be the fourth anniversary of this platform, consecutive weeks. I don't know what, what Saturday this is. We're in 207. I don't know how many more Saturdays this month, but uh, whatever that number is, I think it's 209. We, we, going, we, we going solo and we going off. Right. So put that on your calendars. Join me for that big celebration. Four consecutive years with no days off. Let's go. I got guests, man. I got guests. So let me let me get this screen right. So I do this right. Y'all know I'll be messing this up sometime. So let me let me let me get this right, man. Let me get this right. Here we go. Here we go. I got my guest in the building. Here we go. Good morning to you. Good morning. Man. Good morning. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. We got, hey, y'all, we got in the building Dr. Stephen Peters, Dr. Mark Wilson. He got on his Brooklyn Dodgers Jackie Robinson joint in the building. I, I love it. But then Dr. Peters got on the Dawn Staley, South Carolina Gamecocks women's basketball undefeated. Couldn't nobody knock them off. Not even Caitlin Clark. They undefeated. Notice I didn't say Iowa State. Let me make somebody mad real quick. Because <laughs> Iowa State wouldn't have been on the radar without, without Caitlin Clark. That's why. So somebody out there, you get mad, you can get mad. 
But you, you show me their history where they were always in the final four. Wow. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let me let me share with you who our guests are, right? Let me share. Let me see if I got anybody trying to talk mess on my comments, man. <laughs> All right, y'all. I got you know, um, let me start. I'm gonna start off with Dr. Mark Wilson. <laughs> Mark Wilson, he sent me uh, he sent me this short bio. This guy's bio is, is could stretch all the way down my block, but he sent me the short one. So I called him. I said, I said, yo, you can send me a long one. He said, nah, I'm just, you you keep that one, right? But what he here's what he was saying. He was saying without saying, he said, my word's gonna take care of that bio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dr. Mark Wilson was a teacher, a coach, and then a principal. Now he teaches and coaches principals. Dr. Wilson is in his 12th year supporting leaders full time. He publishes Principles Matters, a national leadership newsletter and teaches classes. You might want to get on that mailing list because I get mine every week and it's, it's top notch stuff. Bro. <coughs> top notch. Um, let me say that again. He publishes uh, Principles Matters, a national leadership newsletter and teaches classes, coaches, uh, consults and helps school leaders lead schools. He's the author of what they didn't teach you in fancy principal school. That's an interesting title, y'all. Let me say it again. What they didn't teach you in fancy principal school. And the co-author of the book, One, uh, subtitled A Plan for Success for Everyone. And let me say that the way he got it written. A plan for success for everyone and everyone. While he was a principal of Morgan County High School in Madison, Georgia, the good work of his teachers, students, and their parents led to the selection as the NASSP, National Association of Secondary School Principals, National High School Principal of the Year. So y'all see, I've been bringing all these principals of the year and assistant principals of the year. We bring, we, we bring some top-notch people on this platform, y'all. And that's all he gave me. He said, I got something for you as soon as you give me that mic. And then Dr. Peters, <laughs> he said, Doc, Dr. Peters has been a classroom teacher, assistant principal, principal, director of secondary education and superintendent during his 38 plus year career. Most of his experiences have been in schools that made significant growth in short periods of time, resulting in both national and state blue ribbons distinction. In 2015, Dr. Peters was a featured the featured subject of an education documentary filmed in the USA by the BBC titled American High School, a school in the South. The document, and, and I might add before I continue, and I, I watch every one of those segments, it was a uh, high powered stuff. I, I guess you could still find it somewhere, maybe YouTube, but it was, uh, you want it, you'll want to see that American High School, a school in the South. That's when he was in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Docu the documentary won Best Education Documentary in Europe in, in 2016 and was purchased and rebroadcast by National Geographic in 2017. As Superintendent Peters led his school district to being named a National School District of Distinction in 2020, an avid sports fan and former athlete, Stephen was inducted into the, uh, is it Colleton? Colleton. Colleton County Basketball Hall of Fame in 2016. Dr. Dr. Peters is founder of the nationally recognized Gentlemen's and Ladies Club programs featured on the Oprah Winfrey Show and past president of the International Literacy Association. Stephen is also best-selling author of several books, Do You Know Enough About Me to Teach Me? Some of y'all might, might if, if those of you that don't know Dr. Peters, you, you, you probably know him now because I'm sure you heard of this book because everybody has. Do You Know Enough About Me to Teach Me? teaching to capture and inspire all learners, choosing to believe, creating a framework for school success, inspired to learn, subtitle, Why We Must Give Children Hope, co-author of the book I talked about before, One, A Process for uh, Building Schools of Excellence for Everyone, Everyone and Everyone, and soon to be released, he is the co-author of Leadership Transformation from A to Z, What Great Leaders Do. Presently, Dr. Peters is president, CEO of the Peters Group, a national and international education consulting agency. That's the Peters Group dot global um, and consulting with initiative one leadership institute That's initiative one dot com. Stephen delivers keynote addresses, provides professional development workshops for leaders, teachers, staff, students and parents and serves as executive executive coach to superintendents and principals throughout the U.S. 
Finally, he received his BS from Hampton University. That's where my daughter got hers. His, his MED from Old Dominion University and EDD from South Carolina State University, right next door to Claflin, where my uh, where my son got his uh, bachelor's. Stephen and his wife, Dr. Angela Peters, reside in Columbia, South Carolina. Good stuff, gentlemen. Let's uh. Let's get in here and, and talk some stuff. I, 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 I got to shout out my aunt, man. I, I ain't seen you on here in a minute to my aunt, Cynthia. Uh, good to see you. And, and, and Chico, Chico, good to see you, sir. That's my uncle. <laughs> hey, hey, Dr. Wilson, um, let's get it started. You were a teacher, a coach, a principal, and now you teach and coach principals. I want to go back. I want to go back in time. Um, you were a classroom teacher. Think about it. As a classroom teacher, who was teacher Mark Wilson? First off, let me say I appreciate being at Principal Cafe Lake Church today. I, uh, <clears throat> I already feel in the spirit, and I appreciate you having me and, and having my brother, Dr. Stephen Peters. We wrote a book together, but it's much more than that. And I'm grateful and blessed to be here with you today. Um, tell you what I did. I taught a class every year that I was a high school principal. So I didn't quit teaching to go into administration. Like, like all of us, we wanted to make a bigger impact with more people. But uh, I always continued to teach while I was principal. And I don't know that I could do that now because honestly vapes and social media take up so much of our people's time out there and it's a whole nother subject but but me as a teacher principal cafe I, I i don't know it's just i guess instinctive i knew that the value of what i did could be found in the work of the students and not in me i'm a i'm a good storyteller and i can get with it but what matters most, and I think this has helped me as a principal and helped me as a supporter of principals, what matters is the response of the intended recipient. What matters is if they get it. A lot of times as principals, I, I continue to, to, to share with them, it's not that you told them, you got to teach them. If you're going to be an assistant principal, if you're going to be a principal, telling people isn't enough. You got to teach them. And so, um, so much of that just comes from, you got to go into this with a humble spirit of being able to say, I'm not the star of every show. I'm a supporting actor in everybody else's show. And that's how I was as a teacher. I made class fun. School ought to be fun. Yeah. Learning is fun. Yeah. And the more we have gotten away from the joy of learning, uh, and especially kids growing up today, they're going to be needing to learn throughout their lives, just like we are. Um, if we make school a place where it's something we do to kids, or even if it's a place we do something for kids, it's not as powerful as if we make school a place that we do with kids. Mm -hmm. That's who I was as a teacher and as a principal and as a principal supporter. I love it. Let me let me ask you this follow up then. In in what ways did Teacher Wilson inform, inspire, and influence Principal Wilson, if any? So I bet you, I bet both of you see this. I bet our audience sees this. I, I think being a classroom teacher is so much like being a principal. Here are a few of the reasons. You have to bring a group of people together and get them to work as a team. You have to inspire people. You have to live with people through the ups and the downs and embrace the failure that comes with the productive struggle. You got to do that as a classroom teacher. But those are the same things. I often think we are preparing principals when we are preparing people to be really good classroom teachers. Now, this assistant principal thing, I don't know, Baruti. I think it's kind of like a whole other job. <laughs> and, 
And and that's why I've always been so grateful for your uh, conviction of, of, of serving the assistant principals because they don't get enough. And I've always admired and appreciated your uh, steadfastness, 207 consecutive weeks yeah. and the books that you've written to support them because that's a hard and a different job. But I really think so much, and I and I talk to principals about this all the time. And I have I have had the opportunity to sometimes it's the same school, but but I've rang that bell over eight thousand times over the last twelve years. I have rang the front door bell of a school eight thousand mm. times Woo. and walked in and worked with people. And again, a lot of them the same people going back. But one of the things that I've shared with them for years is when, when they have doubts, I remind them, you were a classroom teacher and you know how to do this. You know how to look for the kid who needs a little bit extra. You know how to let the kid who's able to fly. You know how to bring them together and make them better. It's, it's the book that Stephen and I wrote one. You got to, it's two sides of the same coin. It, the one matters, the one individual matters, but you know what helps that one individual? being a part of a group that's one and yeah. that to me is so much of teaching and principling i love it i love it i'm gonna ask you to uh dr peters i'm gonna ask you the same question um going back into time because you've been in this business <clears throat> excuse me for 38 years um so when you go back and 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 look at teacher peters uh who was teacher stephen peters well let me correct you it's 44 Yes. 44, yeah. 44. Yeah. Started, started in 1980 uh, as a classroom teacher. Um, before I answer that question, let me give a shout out to one of the greatest leaders in the world, Coach Dawn Staley, um, University of South Carolina Gamecocks, yeah. and to the champions, 38-0 USC women's basketball. So I live here in Columbia. We're proud of them. We're proud of what they represent. But she is a leader that puts the punctuation on the fact that leadership is simply influence. How do you influence others to operate, to become the best versions of themselves possible? So, and the other, I uh, see Eleanor Rodriguez on the yeah, yeah, call. Yeah. Shout out to Dr. Rodriguez. Shout oh, out to sure. Love you too, sister. Love you too. Um, and then before I answer the question again, I have to say that the gentleman that's on the screen with us today, uh, Dr. Mark Wilson, I'm so proud of this, um, this man, this educator, this leader. Um, I was flown to Washington, D.C. many, many years ago by Metropolitan Insurance Company to do the keynote for the announcement of the National Principal of the Year. And that day... Uh, Dr. Mark Wilson uh, became national principal of the year. Wow. And that's when we met. I actually delivered the speech at his celebration and I signed my book, Do You Know Enough About Me to Teach Me to Him? And many, many years later, I walked into his house and my book that I signed for him on that day was sitting on his shelf. And mm. uh, that began a relationship, uh, a brotherhood um that brings us to today. It, it, it gives me chill bumps to really, really think about the journey that, that's been taken, all the things that have happened in the world, uh, racial tension. And Mark and I, uh, African-American male, white male, uh, both with South Carolina roots, uh, came together and wrote a book called One. Uh, how profound that is, you know. Dawn Staley talks about uncommon favor. Uh, we're, we're living that. We're living uncommon favor right now. So now I'll answer your question. Good, no, um, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So as a teacher, I was not one of the best when it came to content delivery. I was not one of the best when it came to curriculum. I was not one of the best when it came to um, really planning my lessons, but I was one of the best to develop relationships with students, yeah, right? To the degree that there was a, an identified connection with students when they went home, that connection was 
they wanted to get back in the presence of, of my teaching. They wanted to be around me. They wanted to be in my space. And I can remember as a first year teacher, the first day I missed school and I felt really bad, but I didn't want to spread germs to my students. So I stayed home. The next day I pulled in the teacher's parking lot. And when I got out of my car, 28 of my 32 homeroom students were standing in the teacher's parking lot, wait for me to pull up. So when I got out of the car, this really tough dude said, uh, where were you yesterday? And so I equated that to, we missed you. <laughs> we missed you. And uh, I, I went the rest of the school year without missing a day of school because I knew that that connection that we have to have to generate students when they wake up in the morning to want to return to that school space, that want they have a desire to be back in your presence has absolutely nothing to do with what subject you're teaching them, but how they feel in your presence. And so I, I grew to understand that before you can teach a child, you have to capture and inspire a child. So through our company, the Peters Group, and when I wrote, Do You Know Enough About Me to Teach Me? It dawned on me that there are three actual steps to effective teaching and learning of any child. First, you have to capture the student. Second, you have to inspire the student. And the third step is made easy because the student then gives you permission to teach them. So Stephen Peters as a teacher was a relationship uh, driven person who understood the power of relationships. Yeah. So you pretty much answered the, the, the part B to the question in terms of in what ways did teacher Peters inspire, influence, inform principal Peters. Um, if you want to add anything to that, though. Yeah, you know, I became a principal of the worst school in our school district where, you know, there was violence and a couple kids uh, not fatally injured, but shot. And uh, nobody else wanted that job. Right. And and I, I tell you, it's interesting that I was a very young principal who understood that um, I needed help and, and I didn't need help from district office. I didn't need help from the school board. I needed help from my students. So I simply asked them for help. I asked them to become part of my management team. Mm. And so what I learned in the classroom actually facilitated the approach that I took as a young principal and continue to teach today that every child in our school has the influence of 12 to 15 other students. So I call them thoughtful leaders. And so my thoughtful leaders were some of the toughest students in our school building who we gave purpose to. Uh, an example of that would be we had a student who had attendance issues, but he loved snatching my assistant principal's walkie talkie out of his holster hmm. and teasing them all day. Hi, hey, I'm, I'm on the second floor. Come get me. So I, I ordered him a walkie talkie. But I asked him <laughs> to bring the younger students off the bus port every morning. So this child went from 16 days of miss, missing school first semester to zero uh, missed days second semester because he had to come get his walkie talkie and he had to bring the younger students into the building. So they became part of my management team and becoming part of my management team and being a part of the thoughtful leaders of our school culture and community, uh, it was attached that they had to be at school. So they came to school more. And while they were at school, they behaved better. And while they behaved better, it then facilitated academic achievement. So Capture, Inspire, Teach then facilitated a whole different culture approach to students who before got into a lot of trouble, who now had purpose. And because they had purpose, they rose to that occasion. Yeah. In my book, Do You Know Enough About Me to Teach Me, there's a chapter. And the chapter says nobody rises to low expectations. That's right. And so we we raise those expectations. We deliver a higher standard and children will come through every time. I believe it. You know, you are listening to the two of you. You sound like me. I um, there's whoever Principal Kefele became and that's including the, the speaker, Principal Kefele, the consultant. 
that person doesn't exist without teacher Kefele. Teacher Kefele inspired that, drove that, influenced that, right? It's, uh, I can't escape that. So I probably think about teacher Kefele probably more than I think about principal Kefele. You know, that was such an important, that's, that's the foundation for, for just what I've, whatever I've done professionally over the years. You know, um, Dr. Wilson, I want, I want to, I want to put you through this scenario. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to represent a, an assistant principal out there on the other side of my camera or a new principal on the other side of my camera or a veteran. So, so, so I'm an AP or a principal and I tune in to the AP and new principals Academy every Saturday morning faithfully and, and, and principal Kefele and his, and his guests, they, they talk about instructional leadership all the time. And I want to be that person. I want to be that instructional leader. But the demands on my time, the, the, the ancillary, tertiary things that are on my plate, I know the significance of me being in the classroom. I know the significance of the pre-observation conference, post-observation conference throughout the course of the year, not just the evaluation season. I understand that, but I can't seem to turn that corner to get it done. I don't have the time. I don't have the space. I don't have the energy to make that happen. I think that person's probably watching right now. And if they're not watching live, they'll see the video later. I want to give this one to both of you as well. I'll start with you, Dr. Wilson. Um, what kind of advice, given all the, the, the coaching that you do and the years of practical experience that you have, what kind of advice do you have for this person as opposed to this person throwing up the towel and going back into the classroom or even leaving the industry altogether? I appreciate you giving me a question I have worked on thousands of times because, look, first off, if you're feeling that way, you're not alone. And by the way, Doc, here's a person, Malik, uh, yep. Malika. Hey, Malika. How are you doing, Malika? Let me talk to you, Malika. I'm going to reach out, talk directly to you. So. First off, I'm glad you're here because that says a lot about you that you're you're a seeker and you're a learner and you want to you want to improve, you want to grow. And Malika, you need to know that whatever you're feeling, there is Stephen Peters who has been featured on Oprah and followed by the BBC and been a superintendent. There is Principal Kefele who has spoken to hundreds of thousands of people. Here I am, I've coached thousands of people you know what? Every one of us felt the same way you did at one time, that how do we get to where we want to be, Malika? Now, I want to tell you this. We all have three things that are finite. We got time, we got resources slash money, and we got energy. It isn't even always the time, Malika, that gets you. It's your energy. And here's the thing. Being a great leader is about being a great prioritizer. You've got to start with the things that matter the most, and you need to do them at the beginning of the day, in the beginning of the week, before you begin to dwindle down on how much time you have and how much energy you have. It's a real thing. Malika, are you ever tired out there? Of course you are. But what you need to think about is this, the key for what you have is picking the right things to do. That is what makes the difference between an effective principle and an ineffective principle. Everybody's working hard. I'll go Yogi Bear on this one, Principal Fele. Uh, even people who aren't working hard are working hard. But you know what? The difference, the people who pick the right things to do, the people who are working on the right work. And you know what the right work is? Is what you hear from Principal Principal Kefele, you heard from him today, and you hear from him every time he talks. It's the word influence. You can't influence people through emails. If you could, you could stay in your office or wear your pajamas all day long. You got to get out there with people. Speaking of, we, we all love basketball. And Malika, let me tell you a story about a new administrator I had. He had been in, uh, he had played for Western Kentucky. He'd played in March Madness. He'd played uh, over uh, in Europe abroad. And we were having, having an AP Academy in person, Principal Kefele. We were 
we were working through things a month at a time and we were talking about how you become a team and he he raised his hand he said i've been on so many teams mm. he said you don't become a team during the game <laughs> he said you don't become a team at practice you know when you become a team during the in between mm-hmm. in the hotel lobby yeah in the bus rides yes and you know what happens to us we get so busy as you said with those tertiary things principal Cafele, where we end up missing the in between we got to go out there and live with people and spend time with them that's where the teachable moment comes that's when the learnable moment comes when we get out there so what malika just start on monday and start the beginning of your day and by 10 o'clock find 10 different people to connect with 10 by 10 10 people by 10 And if you like it, try it again on Tuesday. And if you like it again, try it again on Wednesday. Yeah. You can't do everything. You can't switch from here to there in one step, but start with a little. And more and more, look, I didn't do this my first year as an administrator, but years in, I spent most of my time, my morning routine, I saw the students come in, excuse me, I saw the teachers come into school and greeted them. I saw the students come in. I was on announcements and Stephen Peters and I both believe how important announcements are. And then I didn't even go back to my office. Ms. Seagrest, the world's greatest executive secretary, met me in the library. We met and I went into classes and I sat in the back of the room with my laptop and I would tell a brand new teacher, a first year teacher, Hey, I'm not observing. This isn't an observation. I got to get some emails done and they won't bother me if they think I'm back here. Now, sure, I was watching, but you know what? The kids behaved while I was in there. It was win, win, win. Your job as an administrator is amongst your students and your teachers in real life. Prioritize it. Get out there. Start a little. Do a little more. Then make it the norm. Ooh, that was powerful. Hey, hey Dr. Peters, before you go, let me let me jump in here a second because y'all said y'all got time. Right. My flight's now till 540. Right. Listen. When you said that in between, it, it, it took me somewhere. And, 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 I'm, and I'm not even thinking about me as principal on this uh, in this regard. When you all, the three of us do conferences all the time. When I'm at that conference, I get this. I, if I'm doing a breakout or a keynote, but in this regard, a breakout, I get there super early, like an hour in advance and set up the computer and make and make sure to set, that everything's right and here's why because once i got that down i'm going back into the hallway and i'm gonna shake hands and greet everybody that walks into the room right and 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 chances are real good that them folks want to take a picture anyway right and chances are also real good them folks brought books along so now yes the session you, the three of us are going to deliver, but it's something special. Y'all know this for the folks coming into the room that, ah, but I got them one-on-one for a second. I can get that picture for a second. That's where the relationship is building. And quite frankly, that's where I'm getting the chance to, to elevate what I do. Right. And, and as, as well as the two of you, these shout outs, I do at 1055. That's the in between you talking about. See, hey, somebody out there, I'm getting ready to turn it to Dr. Peters because it ain't my show. Listen, (laughs) that in between, it's y'all show. That in between, man, don't take that for granted. That's it. That's where the rubber meets the daggone road, man. If you all business, 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 but you forget the in between, the relationship, the the personalization of the two of you. Hmm. You You miss golden opportunities. No, it's zip it. Dr. Peter, same question. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I've got chill bumps running up my arms because I, I just cannot believe that we didn't get to have this when we were developing. Yeah. If I had had this, um, you would have never heard of Barack Obama. You would have been talking about Stephen Peters. Oh, well. Um, 
if I had had this as a resource, um, oh my goodness, yes. you all who are the listening audience, um, I know you're grateful, but please, whatever you do, and I know you, you all give this man his flowers while he's here, but listen, do more than that. Do more than that. Pray for him and his family, right? That 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 uncommon favor continues to roll over his life because this guy right here is not normal, y'all. He's special, right? Stephen, so Stephen, can I tag one quick thing yeah. in on that? Yes. People do not realize how much work goes into doing what yeah. looks so easy in yeah. front of y'all. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Props, yeah. Props. yeah. So, so listen, <laughs> because Kefeli keeps it real with you all. He, he opens the door for us to do the same. Right. Yeah. So let, let me just be real with you because you all are in this family. And I will tell you that there are some edge of celebrities out there doing this work. I've been out here a long time. Mark's been here a long time. And just because we've been here a long time doesn't mean that, you know, we're outdated because I'm going to tell you, I was, when I fe was featured on Oprah, I went out into the world for 13 years and I was at the Civic Center in Austin, Texas, and I was delivering a keynote to, to 6,000 teachers. 3,000 elementary teachers in the morning and 3,000 middle and high school teachers in the afternoon. And my wife was with me and they introduced me as an education expert. Mm. And when I got on the plane, she said, oh, what's wrong, babe? They gave you a standing ovation. Why, why, why do you, why, what's wrong? Your, your, your spirit is not right. And I said, babe, I'm not an expert because this is the kind of work that you never become an expert in. Just like golf, I, I'm trying to, to be the best golfer I can be now because I can't play basketball anymore. Golf cannot be perfected, just like educational leadership will never be perfected. You have to be willing, ready, and able to continue to learn. This man right here has given up 207 Saturdays <laughs> for freaking free. Freaking free. <laughs> That's unbelievable. So so you, you have to become the best version of yourself possible because there are people who are investing in you. They, they're making deposits into your life so that you can make future withdrawals. So when you talk about people like Malik, and I saw Andrew Bell, uh, 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 principal from Camden, New Jersey. I saw yeah. your piece about me coming to Camden when you were a young principal. So I want to give a shout out to you and say we're proud of you. When Mark was talking about the priorities of a leader, let me just say to you that you can no longer be the chief decision maker in your buildings, mm -hmm. right? We have uh, BC before COVID, DC doing COVID, AC after COVID. Experience skills, knowledge, those are no longer the key ingredients to being a highly effective leader. You know what is? Listen. Wow. Alfred Powell. Oh, my Coach. God. You got everybody. You got everybody, oh. man. It's Coach Powell in the Coach. building. Oh, my God. I am going to fall <laughs> out of this chair. Lord, boy, I love you, brother. Love you. Listen, that's a prime example right there. Coach Alfred Powell is the best of the best. He's oh, yeah. one of the great ones. And he's on here learning from Principal Caffelli. That's a prime example right there. Boy, from him. We were together in Lima, um, um, Ohio about, oh my God. about a month ago. Coach yeah. Powell bring the house down here where it goes. Listen, I can't even read my notes. This is how I charged up. This I am I, this right here is what it's all about. So yeah. let me say this to you because we are still teachers. Right, no matter best selling authors, keynote speak. Somebody asked me on a plane the other day, it was like, Well, what do you do? And I said, I'm a teacher, right? I, I didn't say I'm a best selling author, I didn't say I've been featured on Oprah. I said, I'm a teacher because I'm proud of that. I am proud of that association.
right? It's noble. It's a calling that's been placed upon our lives. But when it comes to tackling the problems and the issues and all of the things that swirl around us, let me introduce to you something that really helped me, and that's Pareto's principle. So in our work with Initiative One out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, right? June 13th through 16th, go to their website, initiative1.com, big conference, leaders from all over the world. The founder and CEO co-wrote uh, our new book. It's, uh, it's not in development, it's here. Leadership, transformation, A to Z, what great leaders do. Those dots represent the transformation of the leader. So what we do in working with the transformation process from A to Z, every alphabet we cover from a leadership terminology. And then we help you do an assessment on your self-belief. How strongly do you believe about attitude and belief and collaboration? And then D stands for deliver the mail to the right address. And if you're going to juggle all these responsibilities, you have to learn Pareto's principle. Pareto's principle helps you deliver the mail to the right address. You don't have to tell John something you need to say to Gene. You don't, you don't, you, you don't, you can go directly to Gene and deliver the mail to the right address. Mm. Principal Confelli, I tell people all the time when I speak, don't send my check to my neighborhood, send it to my house. Mm. So in education, we we become toxic nice. We become so nice that we're toxic. We have to be able to deliver the mail to the right address. We have to be able to, to understand trust accelerators that, that take us to a place that allow us to not have a meeting after the meeting. Mm. We have to be able to deliver the last 5% of what we're trying to say to people. We have to get right to it. And so Pareto's principle teaches us that there are three segments ones and twos, which represents your mission and your vision, three through seven, which represents paying the rent. These are the things you have to do in a school. You got to pay the rent to keep the lights on. Yeah. And then eight, nines, and tens, that's your drama. That's your drama. So when you as a leader can concentrate on the ones and twos, the mission and the vision, and you delegate the responsibility for the three through sevens paying the rent and you stay away from the eight nines and tens that's the drama people talking about people the gossip how'd you get this job and i didn't how'd you get an interview and i didn't that's the drama cycle so when you when you limit your eight nines and tens and you focus on the one and twos the ones and twos then you are no longer the chief decision maker in your building. Just as we as effective leaders have to develop more leaders, we don't create followers. We want to develop more leaders. Yeah. We have to also develop decision makers, problem solvers. And I leave you with this on this question. There are two things that highly effective leaders do better than others. Make decisions and solve problems. Mm. Make decisions and solve problems. Hey, folks, I, I got I got my pen right here. I hope you're getting these notes, y'all. Because like I like I say every week, we are not a show. This is we 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 not some show on the internet. It's an academy. It's virtual, and it's meant to help you to go back into your schools and effectuate the kind of change and success that you want to see. But you got to take notes, man. You know, I know that everything's not old school pen and paper. Some of y'all type, some of you rewind and all that kind of thing. Whatever you do, whatever whatever makes works best for your brain and how your brain processes information, then do it. But get this information. You know, that that question, I want to I want to spin it a little just just slightly. Um, I, I was I was kind of thinking the AP more so when I asked you. But now I want to look at the new principle specifically. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm this new principle and. The weight of the principalship is is quite heavy on my shoulders. Like I saw it from a distance. I was AP, but now I'm in this seat and I I, I never could have imagined the weight that I carry. I, I, I feel that I don't have, I'm speaking for somebody out here. I feel that I don't have a life 
outside of that school address that th this school is my life and when i get home all i want to do is go to sleep right i don't want to talk to nobody i ain't got the energy to talk to nobody I I'm, I'm stressed so so the demands it's, it's all it's all these demands i'm carrying the demands of central office the demands of just leading a school the demands of standardized testing the demands of parents and community can be overwhelming and consequently i'm contemplating going back into the classroom this was my dream and i'm in it but now i'm considering going back now of course i'm not talking fiction to y'all because i'm sure that the two of you hear this regularly if you don't i do i'll start with you again dr wilson that person's watching what would you say to that person that new first year second year or third year principal that just feels so overwhelmed i know you're out there and i work with people just like you and again just like i mentioned to malika first off know that you're not alone that everybody you see here everybody that has ever made it has had those doubts here's what i've learned science as the, the neuroscience of stress is real it's not something that you agree with or disagree with and we know that chronic acute stress leads to illness and sickness principal kefale i can't tell you how many new principals i meet up with in january i i i, I have several clients around georgia and i travel around like a like a circuit preacher and mm -hmm. i go to their town once a month but when i go in january after after christmas holidays i'll ask these new principals how are your holidays about half of them say well i was sick for most of it mm. and i know why they were sick the adrenaline kept them going yeah during the year and when they slowed down just for a minute their body just said no look your body keeps score y'all now i want to be honest you got to do well enough at this job or they'll get somebody else to do it here's a modest request for you as a leader i call it 711 try 711 before you have to call 911 mm. 711 is 7 hours of sleep a night and those of you who are like going well that's not me look i'm telling you fam it it's real like your body needs sleep and if you're like oh not me you need to go to a lab somewhere and they could study your dna because the human body needs rest you know what happens with sleep deprivation it is uh it, it affects your decision making your interpersonal communications and your executive functions which basically is your job as a school leader when you are running around trying to to to, to do all this work and not sleep the bill is gonna come due Seven one one seven hours of sleep a night one day a week go home when the normal people do when the buses leave you leave go get your hair cut See how well it worked for Baruti? He looking good. Uh, go uh, get your oil changed. Go have your nails. Like, go do something for you and don't feel guilty about it. Yeah. And I'm just asking one day out of those five, y'all. And if you got assistant principal, spread it around. But you cannot live with constant stress. It will wear you out. It literally will chew up in your brain and your dendrites. And the last one, and this is a hard one, is one of those weekend days you need to shut period it period down period you need to think about things that you like doing you know what you need you need a hobby one of the biggest things i talk baruti to uh to people about is i ask them what's your hobby because you need your brain needs a break from this you cannot think about school all the time and and here's the thing you gotta embrace you'll be a better leader with the rest that comes that you give for your brain, seven one 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 day at one weekend day, and look, that's not so much to ask, but it's a good start. And, and I'm going to say this, and it's it's real now. Um, if you are a principal and you pass away on the job, mm. they will plant a tree in your name if you were really good, 
and they will have a new principal and they'll be talking about who the new principal is before the funeral mm -hmm. because that's what happens. Now, look, these are important jobs, but you know what else is important? Your family and your life and your spirit. I, I've heard it said, and I'll stop after this because I do a whole segment on live, live well uh, to lead well. And last thing I'll say, we all talk about juggling the different balls of life, right? Well, most of them are glass and there's one that's rubber, but we treat the ones that are glass like they're rubber. You know, what's glass is your family hmm. and your health and your faith. If you drop them, maybe they don't completely collapse, but then maybe they crack and they're not as strong as they were. You drop the rubber ball, it bounces. You know what the rubber ball is? It's your job. Don't drop the glass ball of your family, of the people who love you, of your health, of your joy. We got to live well to lead well. And I promise it's not like abandoning your job. Everybody that's on here, you, by definition, you have said, I want to do a good job with this, but I want to, I want to promise you, you can find a better harmony in your life. I quit talking about life work balance and started talking about life work harmony because all of us like the job and it's, we find purpose in it. Find that harmony. Start with seven one one. It's better than calling nine one one. I love it. Seven one one. I wrote it down too. Dr. Peters, same question. Yeah. So let me begin by saying what I would say at the end of what I'm about to say, we can only give what we're full of. So the question is, what are you full of? Mm. We can only give what we're full of. So the question is, what are you full of? If you're full, full of passion, you can give passion. But if you're tired, there's nothing to give. Your, your, your reservoir is, is dry, right? Uh, I put in the chat that leadership is not what you do. It's who we are. And when I became a superintendent, this really rang home with me because I, I put on shorts and a t-shirt and a hat on backwards when I'm away from work, right? And I was tearing out of the house one Saturday morning to just kind of go to the grocery store. And, and I think my wife said to me, babe, where are you going? Yeah, it's like, I'm going to the grocery store. She's like, you can't go like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do you mean? So. I learned to put on my uniform, little blue blazer, khaki pants. You know, I got to the grocery store and the first hour was the mayor. The, the, the third hour was the county commissioner. The fourth hour was the city uh, uh, police chief. So in that short span of time, we were able to push agendas to get votes on millions of dollars for the school district, right? So it reminded me that no matter where you are, you your leadership example, you're living it. It's who you are. It's not what you do. The third thing is this. You can no longer do this work in isolation. That's what COVID taught us, is that we need each other. So right now, as you see Principal Caffelli fly all over the world, people not only need help, guess what? They're asking for it. They're, they're asking for it. It's amazing to see Principal Caffelli go to the same place five, six, seven times, right? It's like he's already been there four or five times. They want more. They want more. They want more. They're asking for help. But I tell you what, you can only give what you're full of. What Mark said, I, I love Mark's examples and, and the, the examples that he uses to illustrate a point. And that point is, listen, when you're gone, they're going to put somebody else in that place. So you need to make sure that you do the best you can for yourself, for your family, to not only preserve, because I coach 10 or 12 superintendents right now. Three of the superintendents are the superintendents of the largest school districts in their whole state. And I will tell you that there are people not doing their job because they fear losing their job. Mm -hmm. They're being careful. They're compliance driven in this new wave of what's happening here. Um, and so you want to do more than go to your job and, and, and be compliant. You want to change people's lives. And in order to change people's lives, you have to be a living example. To lead well, you have to live well, 
right? And so Mark talked about a hobby. When I'm on the golf course for four or five hours, my phone is dead. You can't reach me. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I can't, I won't talk to you. My wife knows how to get in touch with me if she needs to. But you've got to be able to understand this dynamic. Every night you go to bed, 95% of us charge our phones because we rely on them during the course of a day. Yeah. So try not charging this thing and see if you can pick it up and use it. <laughs> right? You won't be able to use it because it's dead. It doesn't have the power. I drive an electric car. I have to plan my trips and I need to know that I've got enough charge on that car to take me 350 miles if I'm going you know, 300 miles. You got to plan your life that way. Take really, really good care of yourself and don't feel guilty about it because the best version of you is going to help create the better version of somebody else. Powerful stuff. And I took some notes. Now, you know, Dr. Peters, you um, you said on here that I, I, I kind of keep it real so that you all can be real. And I do. So I know, you know, I'm looking at the numbers and we got a lot of people on here and, I'm, and, and, and you know, I know that y'all thought about that, ex that, that, that expression differently. We can only give what we are full of. So I'm going to go there now. Mm -hmm. Right. So so, you know, that that expression, I don't use the profanity on the platform. So I'll, I'll, I'll use I'll use a substitute. You know, <laughs> when we talk about someone's full of doo doo. <laughs> right. So 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 now in your leadership. Right. And, and the, the people know you faking the funk, man. Now, you got to be old school to understand what I just said. You know, you got to be you got to be P-Funk, Parliament, Parliament Funkadelic. Fake the funk, that means you lying. That's the Pinocchio theory means your nose going to grow. And everybody knows that you faking the funk, you lying, right? So so here, and you, you on your, you, 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 you leading in your school, but everybody knows that you, you, you full of doo-doo. <laughs> and and that's all you can give is doo doo because that's what you're full of, right? And everybody knows it. The staff knows it. The students know it. The parents know it. The community knows it, right? So, you know, so when when you said that, I thought that's where you were going, but I see I see you kept it diplomatic. But I, I said, but I know people thinking, yeah, but you could flip that one. And I said, let me let me just go yeah. ahead and flip it, right? So, um, make sure that you are bringing substance mm. because as dr peter said we mm. we can only give what mm. we are full of mm. right mm. we can mm. and if we full of doo doo that's all you can give mm. and that mm. might get you somewhere to an extent but eventually you get figured out and people know you just faking the funk and your nose is growing and they see that of you. So you got to make yeah. sure, no, I got substance, yeah. man. I let, read, I study, I learn, I grow. Yes. Go ahead, jump on in here. Yeah, let me say this. Let me say this. And I tell you, you just moved my spirit to release this. And I, I'm glad that God spoke to me in this stead. Um, wow. Wow. We 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 look the part. We um, We talk or speak the part. Right. We wear nice suits and ties. We we know how to present ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. We look the part, act the part, speak the part, which is. You can find evidence in these um, just these mission statements uh, everywhere I go. They 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 are custom for we we believe that all children can learn. We will teach them through a differentiated instructional approach. We will curriculum map our way to producing global members of our society, right? So if, if all children can learn, then my question is always, why aren't they learning? That nobody knows it. It's in a custom frame. So we look the part, act the part, speak the part. But I tell you what, when it comes down to doing this work, you got to get down and dirty. You, you got to be able, like I was with Jerry, my head custodian, when teachers show up uh, at 740, that's their contracted time, but we've got six, 700 hungry kids that show up at your doors at 630 in the morning like they did at OW. Somebody's got to open the, those doors and somebody's got to feed those kids and somebody's got to say, I feel you, I'm here for you. And it was two of us and 700 of them. I've always used... Uh, common sense to say that if I've got 12, 1400 kids in my building of students, 
and we only have 135 adults, guess who's in charge of that school? Those kids can take over that school anytime they want to. So at best, behoove you to create relationships with them, to be vulnerable, to be transparent, to be honest and say, hey, I need your help. I can't do this alone. We need you to help run this school, move this school to a different place. And so the bottom line here is now we've moved from what administrators used to be and need to be, knowledge, skill, experience, to vulnerability, transparency, honesty, trustworthy, high integrity. There's a whole different set of skills that you need now that weren't needed before, right? You still need to, to know, but it's more than pedagogy, right? I had a summer that I was fortunate enough to spend with Dr. James Comer at Yale University. And the one thing that he taught us that I will never forget is that no significant teaching and learning can take shape in the absence of a significant relationship. And I keep coming back to those relationships, but this is 44 years, y'all, of relationships serving me well, right? Uh, kids that I met, students I met 20 years ago, I'm still in touch with them. You can look at my Cash App and see that, that students who were at OW in 2015 when we filmed American High School, which is right now showing on Amazon Prime Video all six episodes, you'll see that we didn't act the part, look the part, dress the part. We are the part. So authenticity in a leader is the number one ingredient to that leader becoming a highly effective leader. Be authentic. And lastly, I'm going to give you three words to write down. And I want you, as we do at Initiative One, I want you to take a sticky note and I want you to put this somewhere in your car, uh, not to block your rear view mirror, but stick it on the bottom of your rear view mirror. Write these three words. I am enough. Mm. You don't need to be like Principal Caffelli. You don't need to be like Dr. Mark Wilson. You don't need to be like Stephen Peters. And, and better yet, you can't be Principal Caffelli. God only made one of him, right? You know, we got too many people trying to imitate other people, talk like them, act like them, dress like them. Be you and know that you are enough. I Can enough. I tag in on that, Principal Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's why Stephen Peters is here decades later. This is why all of you who, who keep coming back to hear Principal Caffele each week, this is why, is because is substance. Um, you ever run anybody? They're all sizzling, no steak. Mm. Listen, when you are a leader, you know how the kids, they can, they can smell fear. Like when there's a new teacher or a substitute, they know, and they know if you're pulling one on them, if you're faking, when you are a leader, this is a leadership is an inside out operation. You have to change your inside before you're outside. It's what Steven says as it's not what you do, but who you are. And if that's true, it's an inside out operation. You've got to get your, your, your humility in check because you are a vessel for someone else. It's not, you are not going to get the best actor. You're going to get best supporting actor when you're a principal. I tell principals, uh, Principal Caffele, that a lot of times we think, you know, like we're Hercules. We're the, the hero of this thing. Yeah. But if you've ever watched that movie, there's, there's a little tiny half cow, half human person that Danny DeVito does the voice for. That's who we are. We're the ones that train the heroes. The teachers are our heroes. That's where we put them in these these sessions. Is is this is where we put them in this, these these uh, situations? Is we want them to have that in between time, that long time, that influence on students. And what we do as as leaders is we humble ourselves. Yeah. That means that we don't go in with anything other than looking around to find out where we can be used that day. And look. I had good days of that. I had bad days of that. Same, same now. But the days that I find myself most valuable to other people and find more purpose is when I can 
purify my heart and clear my thoughts and ask myself the question, who can I serve today? Mm. I heard this quote. I don't know if she really said it, but it's a good story either way. Somebody allegedly asked Mother Teresa, how do you do what you do? You go to the lepers of Calcutta. Their families don't even come see them. You go out there risking your life to witness and to love them every day. How do you do that? And her reply was, in the morning, we pray to Jesus. And in the afternoon, we try to find him in disguise. Try to find him disguised. Mm. When you are a school leader, look, if you ever wanted to have a career where you could be of service, we are working on a baited field because there are people around us in need all around us. And we don't even have to try hard to find them. Usually they come up and tug on your sleeve and say, doc, principal, teacher. Mm. And you know what? That is the greatest compliment that I think we can ever have as people is when somebody <laughs> looks at us as somebody that they can ask for help. And we should never mm. think that's a distraction because mm. the distraction is our job. The distraction is our power. Mm. Somebody has that moment. And that is so hard as leaders because you're busy. But man, mm. you don't know if they're going to ever summon up enough courage to come to you mm. and so if we can be still in that moment and mm. if we can be faithful to the work wow full of faith to do it then we're serving and we're helping people and can't nobody stop us wow as folks on there said amen and that's a word that's principal Cafelli. yes sir um, Audience, please write this down. Thank you, Mark Wilson. Thank you. you. You're just such a blessing. The way you're able to transcribe into simple messages to people, that makes sense. Um, one, write this down. Humility is the new smart. Two, your energy introduces you before you enter a room. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I had a guy once early on in my career tell me, um, these folks are interested in you in a high position in this huge school district. Um, and went in, had dinner with them. The next morning he called and gave me the best advice I ever got in my career. He says, your presence alone is strong enough to sell your story, but you don't need to sell it, right? Sometimes we talk too much. And I need to tell y'all today, because you're in an academy where you're growing and you're learning, everybody's not happy for you, right? Those claps, those claps when they're clapping in a phony way for you, and they're wondering, they're clapping and saying, how in the heck? Did you survive the traps I set for you? Mm. They're not applauding you. But you can't spend time worrying about other people. Right? You, you can't. I, I asked God when I became the first African-American superintendent in a, a district that never even thought about a black man running the district, much less being there as the chief decision maker. Oh, my God. I came home one night and I said, you know, God, why did you take me in such deep waters? And his answer to me was, because your enemies can't swim. <laughs> We've got to be able to put this thing in perspective and know that because we're called to this work, we are one of the chosen ones. And because you're one of the chosen ones, you have a responsibility to make sure that in any building you are a part of leading, that there is positive accountability for the work being done, and two, that you create systems that facilitate what we call sideways accountability so that everybody is accountable for each other. And so that's a deeper dive into what we talk about in 
leadership transformation from A to Z, what great leaders do. We create sideways accountability so that you alone don't have to be responsible and accountable for everything that happens. You facilitate the culture, you create the conditions for that to happen. Powerful stuff. You know, I'm looking at these comments. I'm trying, you know, the, the, the fam out here that's been rocking with me for a while. They know I, I try this impossible task of, of staying on top of the comments, but also staying focused on, on what's being stayed, said. It's, um, it's a challenge, but it's necessary. And uh, I'm just, I'm loving, you know, all this feedback that the two of you are receiving. Um, my, my man from East Orange, New Jersey here was saying, this is one of the best of the 207, you know, so, uh, you know, powerful, powerful word going out. I never got to, the, you know, we still going. I never got to the talking points yet because I had so much I wanted to ask you. And I got one more before we and I want to usually midway 12 ish. Uh, I want you to give you contact information and whatever else you want to put out there. But let me let me let me do this first. This word equity. Um, mm. That is the that is America's boogeyman. Mm. Right. It's, um, you know, I could say DEI, but I, I, I like to focus on that E that 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 equity. That's the that's the word that when we have these little pre conference Zoom meetings or pre pre visit Zoom meetings and the folks ask me politely if I could not use the word equity, if I would refrain from its usage and so forth. And, that, and I, I always know that's because they don't know what it is. And then we get into that discussion. And they say, oh, OK, well, come on and bring it, because in my mind. Equity is an absolute necessity if we're talking about children having an opportunity to maximize their potential, not only in school, but throughout life. So if I'm in a school, if I'm in a, if I'm in a school where the politics don't allow the, the teacher to be equitable, then I may be shortchanged not only as a student, but for the rest of my entire life, because there was no one there that had the willingness because of the politics to meet me where I was, as opposed to meeting us all in the same place. So with that said, I, I'm, I don't have a question. I'm, I'm more so as I wrote in my notes, I'm just curious as to your thoughts. Um, I've been I've been starting with Dr. Wilson. So let me go, Dr. Peters. Um, what are your thoughts about this word equity in the in the in the way that we're as a nation, we we're, we're we're preventing people or blocking people from even using the word, let alone the substance of what equity is. Yeah. First, I, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm glad we're talking about it. Um, I just signed a contract in a state where uh, attached to their contract for me to come speak were two house bills that talked about preventing me from saying the word equity. Um, yeah. The good thing about being in America is, and the, the wonderful thing about our speech is you can say the same thing using different words, right? Exactly. Equity, yeah, exactly. equity, equity to me is giving students what they need when they need it. So I don't have to say the word, I can just say, we need to give students what they need when they need it. And then I use the illustration, I know everybody's seen the meme of, uh, giving students of different heights the, the the blocks to stand on. If you're short, you get a higher block to see over the fence. If you're taller, you, you, you may not need a block. You may not need two or three blocks. You might need one. My thing is, why, do, why are we worrying about getting blocks for different height children when we can just knock the fence down? Mm -hmm. All right? It's like it's no longer an issue. Get rid of the fence and you don't need blocks for children to stand on. Right. I think we have to get to a point where um, I tried to make this point earlier when I said that we have people not doing their jobs, leaders not doing their jobs because they're afraid of losing their job. You can't be courageous and full of faith, fear at the same time. Courage and fear don't coexist. You, you, you got to choose one of those. I had those behind my desk when I was a high school principal. It's courage and fear don't coexist. You've got to be courageous and you've got to be bold enough to realize that, wow, you can't be afraid of losing your job, but you have to be smart and you have to learn how to navigate the space because your message is too important for people not to hear. So for somebody to say to us, you can't use the word equity 
uh, a response that we have or an option could be, okay, well, get somebody else. There's a lot of speakers out there. That's egotistical. When I say to you that humility is the new smart, you have to humble yourself. You have to be prayed up. You have to pray for discernment to be able to learn how to navigate this space. Don't don't be quick to say, well, I'm not coming. You know, I'm I'm Principal Caffelli. I'm not coming. If you that that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> and so you you want to make sure that you position yourself in such a way that people realize that you are a change maker, not a troublemaker, right? We want to create change. And so we find ways to be able to do this work. I can't imagine being an effective leader in education without equity being the foundation of how we do this work. Equity is so important. It's imperative that we understand the importance of equity and how we might be able to navigate the space together. But you can't do it in isolation. You have to collaborate. You have to do the things that you all have been doing all along. I am just simply blown away at this academy and this arena of knowledge and, and power. Um, my wife and I have a foundation and it's, it's principled on hope, H-O-P-E, helping others pursue education. And the power of that brand is that it changes generational cycles, right? It creates pathways, multiple pathways for people to say, I am here today, but I don't have to be here tomorrow. And equity is at the center of adaptive work. It lives, it resides in the adaptive space of where we are. But my good friend, um, uh, Dr. Pedro Nagara, he's at UCLA now, says often, that the reality of matter is, is that the systems that we are used to operating under in public education are no longer aligned to the realities we face. And so one of those simple realities that Pedro talks about is rooted, resides in equity. And so we have to find ways together, y'all. I don't have the answer. Um, we have to find ways together to be able to learn how to navigate this space in a way that it is productive. So that that's the answer I have. Yeah. Principal Kefele, do you know where you are on June the 30th, 2020? But because I do, you are on a broadcast with uh, Stephen Peters and I, yeah. we had you and Jimmy Casas yeah. uh, and, and look, you and I know we, we, we left the principalship at the same time you and I did. And, you uh i've known i've known you for years and we've yeah. done a lot of things together but i was so excited at that particular time in 2020 i certainly wasn't excited about what triggered it because a lot of it had come after george floyd and um we Stephen and i were given a grant from the wallace foundation now, now get this the name of the session was social justice education That's right. and the school leader, That's right? which we distributed all over for your session. When we had you and Jimmy on, yeah, I had, I didn't have all these fancy things you figured out since then. StreamYard, I was <laughs> on zoom and I was going to put people in small groups and we broke zoom. We had 2000 people come on, and they were they wanted to learn how do we teach social justice education at our school i ran i asked you what are some books that people ought to read to help them towards this and you offered introduction to african civilization by john jackson and mm -hmm. before the mayflower by Lerone bennett and from slavery to freedom by john hope franklin mm -hmm. i'm sending that out all over the country and then fast forward two years when Stephen Peters, my friend, he and I, we write a book called One, and we can't be a whole lot more clear about what we're after. And then we're doing keynotes all over. And I remember, Stephen, that time that they brought me and you together and they said, we want you to talk about equity, but we don't want you to say it by the name. Right. 
And you know what my brother Stephen Peters said, Baruti? He looked at me and said, you know what that means? It means we're making progress. Yeah. He said, yeah. because when it gets hard, you know that you are pushing the ball up the hill. Yeah. And when it's easy, you know that, that it's not. So we must have sure enough pushed the ball up the hill for a while because we went from how can you build a social justice education program at your school to don't say the word equity. And look, I um gosh, we could talk about this for hours for sure, but I'll I will be brief in saying, isn't all of our work equity? Yeah. Yeah. You Should can be. call it or not call it, but every bit my mom and dad, they grew up during the, and they certainly didn't have the same things that everybody has. I'm not trying to equate that by any means, but they grew up and couldn't go to school beyond the third grade because they grew up there into the depression and world war two. And they got married and had five kids. And then my dad went back and got a high school diploma at the age of 59, mm. got all five of us through school. Wow. I was taught by example that learning and education, that is your, your greatest shot at a more equitable future for yourself and for your family. One of the things that I'm both inspired by that we need to do and concerned about is the pushback on, on doing so it's bigger than just us giving speeches. It's, it, it, it it's trying to push things back in a different direction that education isn't what the three of us and probably most everybody on the call know education to be it, it. You know, when we think about student behavior in class, when we think about parents and how they approach school, I think one of the biggest things is if they see us as a force for good and a force for change and a force for equity, then they're going to want what we have. But honestly, if we wipe equity out, what do we even have? Mm -hmm. Now I'm like you, Stephen, and of course you are always the one to be the calming presence for me. And I, I understand and appreciate that, but um, it doesn't do us any good to not be able to share with people. Right. I know the early Christians survived by using the fish symbol and, having their holidays tag in with pagan holidays and trying to hang along right. and look, it frustrates me, but cause how long is enough? But I do know that for our administrators out there, drunk, don't grow weary of doing good, continue to look for places to do mm -hmm. right and continue to do equity. But I hope they don't lose. I hope everybody didn't lose their job because we need them. But I also hope they don't go about this job in such fear that they can't get kids what they need. Right. And that's what I said. I asked people, can I say that? Cause yeah. I still get that too. I had, a, I had a thing last, uh, last a couple of weeks ago and it was a statewide thing. And then very nice people said, cause they know me, they got like a day before and they said, well, now remember, we can't say this and this. And I said, is it all right that I say that we get children good things? Yeah. And they said, yeah, that's not against the rules yet. Wow. And that's something that's the world we're in now. Yeah. That's the world we're in. Let me do this. Um, I, it, it, we're, we're not done. Folks out there, fam out there, we're not done. But I do want, I know that people do sometimes, people are in and out. So I want to make sure that you get the contact information. And then uh, Dr. Peters has a conference that he does um, in June. So let me start off with Dr. Peters. Uh, tell him how to get in touch, how to reach you, how to contact you, follow you, whatever. And then um, mm -hmm. give us the brief on the conference because I want to keep this conversation. Yeah, yeah. So at Stephen G. Peters, Stephen spelled with a PH, at Stephen G. Peters, that's my X or Twitter handle. Um, Stephen at thepetersgroup.global is my email uh, website, thepetersgroup.global. And if you want to purchase Leadership Transformation A to Z, um, you can do it at www.initiative1.com. That's where you can also register for the conference in Green Bay. 
Leadership Transformation A to Z, June 13th through the 16th. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, Dr. Wilson. I just tagged mine in the chat. It's principal-matters.com. I have a newsletter that comes out uh, every Sunday evening at six and it's freaking free. Oh. And so, uh, and, uh, and then my email is mark.wilson.ga at gmail.com. And I have, uh, as, as, as uh, principal Kefali offers, got a lot of, a lot of things for you for free, for resources. We're all in this, this mm. ministry and this calling together to try to help school leaders lead schools. Awesome. Love it. Now, now I'm not seeing it in what, what platform did you post there to? I put it in the chat on our. Uh, oh, you, you put it on stream yard. You got in order for everybody to see it. Um, let me, let me see if I can. Uh, okay. Get, put, get, are you on Facebook at all or, or, or YouTube? I was just on stream yard. Twitter. Okay. They're not only ones going to see that is me. Um, well, you, you already know it. So yeah, but you gave it to, I'll go to YouTube. Time. Yeah, and, and you gave it to him. I want to. I want to jump on. You, go ahead and do that. I want to jump on some of the talking points you gave me, and then I'm gonna have to reschedule us to do a part two because um we got a lot to cover yet. But I want to. I want to go to um my brother here from Jersey. I believe Eric is from Jersey, and uh, and, and, and let me address this. And if anybody, if, if either of you want to jump in here, uh, Eric uh said I'm listening. Eric Nixon, I'm listening to this conversation, but can we truly have equity when most urban schools? are lacking highly effective certified teachers or certified teachers at all let me let me let me just say this to you eric uh i i certainly feel your pain um having having been an urban school principal here in jersey for those 14 years i i feel that pain but i want to i want to i want to provide i want to respond to it this way given my capacity as host of this platform um I'm gonna give you this analogy. There's a is a football game on game day uh, at the collegiate level, and the the head coach is in the locker room with the rest of the, the the coaches, the assistant coaches in the various capacities that they coach. And the coach says, "All right, all right, guys, let's go on that field and let's win. Let's make it happen." And they all get hyped. Ah. And then they say, and if you need us, we'll be back here in the locker room. Just come back here and holler. Go on out there and win. And now they go out onto the field. But they got no coach. They on their own now. And then we expect them to win in a, in, 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 in a full collegiate game. The analogy I'm drawing is in a lot of schools, we – literally say that figuratively speaking we say all right teacher first is staff meeting first day staff meeting regular staff meeting whatever meeting all right teachers we got to raise these scores we got to elevate this school get out there and let's go principal might be charismatic and they hyped and now they go and there's no coaching whatsoever the only time that teacher sees that principal is at a staff meeting in the hallways and during formal evaluation season. But 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 the informal, the collegiality, the collegial relationships, they don't exist. It's just, all right, it's November. Got to do that formal observation. All right, it's March. Got to do that formal observation or whatever, whatever, whatever time zone you're in and will dictate what month that is. But outside of that, that teacher is on their own like that coach. That, that, that football team that's on their own without the coaching throughout the course of the game. So I'm saying that to say this. As leader, ultimately, I'm going to have to play the hand that I'm dealt. And I got to hold that mirror up to me. Let me get my mirror. And I got to ask myself, what is it about my leadership that is making that teacher phenomenal? So it's like flipping that mirror on to me and saying at the end of the day, how many teachers did I impact today? How much improvement was it was made today relative to those conversations? What was the substance of my visit in that classroom? 
What kind of feedback did I give that teacher immediately? What kind of conversations did we engage in as a result of that lesson? Or in that pre-observation, informally, what did we talk about? And what was that skill set that we said, let's hone in right there? Now look at everything the world could see, the eyes could see, but that thing right there, let's make that skill set that much better. Because at the end of the day, here's the thing, Eric, and I'm talking to that whole family out there. Everyone on this call, when you were on the come up looking up and you wanted to be an administrator, you said, and if I'm wrong, put it in this chat right now because I will see it. You said, if they give me an opportunity, you said this, if they give me an opportunity, that school's going to feel that change is coming. Now, if you didn't say that, I know I said it about me. I said, if they give me a shot in that school, that school is going to see progress. I said that. I said it to anybody that was willing to listen to me, including the superintendent. So you and I can't now get in there. And now we say, oh, no, no, no. Because we knew what was in there before we got there. And that may have been the incentive for us to get that job anyway. Remember, if you know my past, I only wanted to be in a low performing school. I, di I didn't want to be in a school that didn't need me. I wanted to be in the school where the test scores were in the either single digits, teens, 20s, or 30s. I don't want no better than that. If I'm in there, I don't need to be there. I need to be somewhere else. So I know the work is going to be overwhelming, but that's where I want to be. So I got to be able to look at that teacher at the end of the day and say, that teacher's growing because of the collegial relationship that we have. So that now as I'm helping that teacher to become certified, but but more importantly, to become amazing, now we're going to start to see the results. But you and I, and I'm not talking specifically to Eric, so I don't want you to internalize it that way, Eric. I'm talking to everybody. At the end of the day, you and I got to go to the mirror and ask ourselves the my, my new quintessential question. What is my value to the teachers that I supervise instructionally? That's the book I'm writing in May. What is my value to the teachers that I supervise instructionally? And that's that heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you and the person in your mirror, right? That's that's an important question. Um but that's it. That's it. I just wanted to say that. And um, but keep on rocking with us, Eric. I just, you, you know, I'm, I'm not really talking specifically to, to, to you, Eric. I'm talking to the fam because I don't want you to internalize that that way. I'm talking to everybody because we got a lot of young leaders on here to tune in every week. And I want us to make sure that that self accountability is always in place. If it's it's your school, your name is, is written invisibly on the facade of the building. And, <coughs> and therefore it says X, Y, Z school. And then your name right next to it is invisible, but that whole community sees it. Everybody knows that's your school. So therefore, we're in there. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it since we there? Enough said. Anybody want to chime in? Y'all good? I, I just think that, you know, the bottom line is, like you said, when you get your opportunity, failure is not an option. I mean, it. it I hear all the time that wow, this happened and this happened and this happened. Guess what? The work still has to get done. And guess who's leading the charge? You are. So bottom line is the work still has to get done. And there are ways to navigate that space with other people to make that happen. Um, I like Principal Cafele. I never led a school that wasn't the worst <laughs> in, in the district. And, you know, two, three years later, we were a national Blue Ribbon School, state Blue Ribbon School. When I was superintendent in two years, they, you know, they wanted me to fail because of the color of my skin. But we were we were a national school district of distinction because I've never felt like uh, there was another option other than to be highly not just successful, but to be very successful in our approach and our delivery because we deliver it. It's such a, a place. We call it a 10 experience. When I speak, I want to leave my audience with a 10 experience. When I train, I want to leave those in that training workshop with a 10 experience, an experience better than, more impactful than any other that they've ever had before. And so when you approach your work in that way, 
it also helps facilitate your preparation, right? I think about Kobe Bryant. I mean, I when I finished playing college basketball, I was coaching some guys who went to the NBA. My teammate went to the NBA. And I can remember a conversation with Kobe Bryant um, uh, picking up Allen Iverson uh, at his hotel when they were in LA. It was, it was Iverson's first season in the NBA. Took him out to dinner and he says, well, AI, what are you going to do now? It's about 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. And AI said, man, I'm in LA, man. I'm going to the club. Mm-hmm. He said, Kobe, where are you going? He says, I'm going back to the gym. Yep. He says, you're going back to the gym? It's 9.30 at night. Practice. Correct. Practice. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. So then you think about Kobe's approach to, even though AI is a Hall of Famer too, you think about Kobe Bryant's approach to his trade. And Mark said something early. I wrote it down. It says, be faithful to the work. If you are faithful to the work, your cultivated presence before people is going to be so strong that you'll be able to influence people, right? And I wrote that down. It says leadership is influence. And here's what it means to me, um, because I'm learning today, too, while we're teaching you. And here's what I learned, that influence is indicating the need for loving you, for empowering you, for letting you know that I need you to collaborate with me to create excellence. There you go. Those are the words in the word influence. So if, if leadership is influence, it's doing all of those things and it's centered in love. I, I will tag this in, um, in in response to what Eric said and, and first say, um, man, all this works hard. It, it is. And we are never better than our teachers and we currently do not have enough certified teachers to go around. There's lots of conversations that can spin off from that, but I will offer this and it's what both of you have said. Um, I remember back in my coaching days and the best compliment we could give to a coach was to say he could be, he can beat you with his, but he could also turn around and beat his with yours. <laughs> and so part of this is having that same thing that Principal Caffelli always says, your your energy introduces you into the room. When, you know, it's not a gimmick for Principal Caffelli to say that he's on fire. He is trying to speak into our new leaders. Nothing great is ever accomplished without enthusiasm. And if you don't believe in you, you're going to have a real hard time getting anybody else to believe in you. You got to live a life like you're a, like you're a cornerback in a game. And the only time anybody knows is, notices you is when they throw the ball over your head, like you got to, and then you pop back up talking smack. Like you, you've got to have a little bit of edge about you if you're going to do this work. And look, I'm not trying to discount the true and real circumstances that we have particular geographic shortages of teachers, but I do want to offer you encouragement. You have something in you that compelled you to raise your hand and say, I want to lead people go about it with a fury and a fire that you are not going to be beaten and you'll make progress. Promise. Love it. Hey, folks out there, I haven't said this the whole time, but I've been putting it on the screen. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet. Let them know we're still here. I'm not going to go too much longer. I just want to at least get one of these talking points. And um, I spent I, I, I was overzealous in generating these questions. Um, but let me let me put something on the screen here. So hit the share button, hit the retweet, hit the repost, hit the tag buttons, um, tag somebody, them Facebook groups, those Facebook leadership groups. Let them know. I think they all know anyway. Uh, Donna, Donna Medina, share again, make sure that they know on the Facebook side, but, um, if, but, but if not let folks know that we're still here for a few more minutes, you know, Dr. Wilson, um, uh, the, the two of you, um, Dr. Wilson and Dr. Peters sent me these, um, these talking points. And I just wanted to delve into maybe, maybe two of them. Um, you said in most cases, the, um, the AP needs direct, uh, the AP needs direction, not directions elaborate on that on that for us 
the most valuable that you can be as an assistant principal to the school and to your principal is to be able to accomplish a lot with very little direction, directions and very little direct supervision. What I mean is you got to get stuff done. If you have to be told every little thing, you are no longer a help. You are a hindrance. And so you got to try to get yourself up to speed uh, as quickly as possible and, and be someone who can take something broad and get the details done of it. That's how an AP is, is valuable to, to her principal. Hey doc, let me jump in here. You know, there's, there's, there's a prince, there's an AP watching right now. And this AP and I, and this is not someone that I know It's just something that I feel. And, and this AP is not receiving direction because this person is working for a principal who was once an AP who did not receive direction. So now here I am, I'm just, I'm just following that same traditional format. This, this, this age is old and I don't know to give this AP direction. So the AP is listening to you right now. The AP probably is in the chat saying, this is the best session ever of the 207 weeks. But now I got to go back to school with this leader that doesn't have a clue as to how to utilize me. And, and you and I, Doc, we can't talk to that leader right now because we don't know that that leader is on here, but we know that AP is on here. What do you say to that AP? Like I said earlier to uh, to our other people, first off, you're not alone. There are other people who feel that way. And for you to continue to grow, to come here to the academy, to connect individually with other APs, that'll help you in your growth. But in your day-to-day, -day, here, here's the way I always think about it, is in every job, there's this balance going on between your, your wisdom and your authority, all right? So when you when you start a job, they give you some authority and you got no wisdom. You don't know what to do. The longer you stay, the more your wisdom rises. There is a point where your wisdom is going to so exceed your authority that you're going to know better, but not be allowed to do better. And at that point, you have to decide, do I stay here? Do I go somewhere else? Am I being nudged to do something else in my life or in my career? Because I'm going to tell you, this is a happy life when your wisdom and authority are roughly the same. But I have found it, and I, all three of us, and probably everybody on here has found that moment where you have learned more, but you're not able. For example, you know how to make instruction pop at your school, but your principal won't let you. Now, then you got to say, what do I see six months out, a year out, three years out? And, and one of the hardest things in our profession is people live where they want to live because there's schools everywhere. If there weren't schools everywhere, we would be more likely to move. So often there are people who know a lot, but they can't get to it because they don't have the authority for it and they don't want to move. And you have to decide, am I going to hold my nose and do this or am I going to move my whole body and do it somewhere else. And that may be, it's, it's real. It might not be a happy answer to that question, but, um, but all of us face it and you can't immediately go and you've got to decide whether this is a bug on the windshield or an actual threat down the road. You know, what am I looking at? But, um, but you know, we got a lot of APs out there who could do more, but they're not allowed to. And, that is one of the hard parts of that job. Yeah, absolutely. You feel me on that? I, 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 I mean, I, I definitely feel you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it moving just so I can make sure that I get as much of this in as I can since I spent so much time in that first hour, first hour and a half. Dr. Peters, you you, you said leadership requires a dress rehearsal. Yeah, I'll explain what you what you mean by yeah, that. Yeah, so the three of us were talking before the session about when we became administrators and how they gave you this big wad of keys, right? <laughs> this is the building, these are the keys, and you just have it, have at it, you know. And I can remember distinctly an experience I had when I my first principalship where we went from worst in the district. Three years later, we were in we were a state blue ribbon school, but when I left, they had to close the school, right? 
because they couldn't find anybody to run it. They had 12 to 16 fights every day. Wow. And somebody came up to me, one of my former school board members, and said, man, you were so good that we had to close the school. We couldn't find anybody else to run it. And when I walked away from that conversation, it really was a footprint to who I am today. Because I realized that a great leader does not leave a building that you go from bottom to top and it goes back to the bottom. A great leader develops other leaders and a plan for that building, that school that was in it to continue to sustain the growth that transpired, trend, sustainability. So my lesson taught me that, man, I really needed the dress rehearsal, right? For this position, for this assignment. So when I became a superintendent, one of the first things I did was realized that I had a dress rehearsal and what happened happened. So I started identifying principals, assistant principals who wanted to become principals, principals who wanted to become superintendents, not being threatened by the fact that there might be somebody who wants to be a superintendent that might be better than me. See, I've always been a believer that if you're the smartest person in your circle, you need a new circle. Yeah. I always hired people smarter than me. I married a woman smarter than me. My wife has a, a, a doctor, a PhD in biochemistry. And, and my, my dad used to always say, boy, I don't know how you did that. But, but I always try to surround myself with people smarter than me. But there's a step that you have to go to. You have to go to tier two. You have to be comfortable with that. You can't be threatened by it. You can't hire people smarter than you and be threatened by that. Right. And so I started developing more leaders in our district, knowing that I would not be there forever. So when I left that superintendency, a person that that was in our aspiring leaders academy that that went from elementary principal to director of uh, research and testing to assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction became the superintendent. Right. And so my dress rehearsal prepared me for the emphasis that we placed when I became a superintendent on developing other leaders. Four of the five assistants that I had when I was a superintendent are now currently superintendents. Wow. That's, that's highly phenomenal. effective leadership. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Wow. Good stuff. I'm, I'm going to keep it. Y'all see, I'm going to keep it moving because I just want to make sure that the fam gets as, mu as much of you as I can in this session. And then I'm, we're going we gonna to do a part two. I'll call you and, and, and schedule that. Um, Dr. Wilson, you said the AP solves more problems than, and you say she, so we want to make sure we mix it up, than she creates. What are you saying to us? I went and visited. I had a uh, middle school principal and she had two APs. And in August, I went on my coaching cycle and said, how's school? And she said, school's great. And I went back in September. I said, how's school? And she said, school's hard. Went back in October. I said, how's school? And her head was on the table. Mm. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I'm not spending my time being principal. I said, what are you spending your time doing? She said, well, I'm having to smooth things over from one of my APs because she's, she's making all the teachers mad. I said, well, what else are you doing with your time? She said, well, I'm having to smooth things over with my other AP. Uh, he's making all the parents mad with the way he disciplines kids. Mm -hmm. And I said, so what would you declare your problem is? And she said, well, I think I got an AP problem. I said, I don't. So I think you got a principal problem. Mm -hmm. I said, how often have y'all been meeting? And she said, well, you know, back in August, we were meeting a lot. And I'm like, you mean August when it was like this? And see, here's the thing. I don't blame the AP on this. I'm saying that we've got to set up APs to be able to create better instead of create problems. And I have found that the, the fastest way to, to get to that is to regularly meet, not to say who's covering volleyball and who's got the gym. You got to... You've got to really spend time together. That principal and AP relationship, they got to know not just what to do, but why. They got to know what you're thinking about. This is a, I promise I'm going to give you the two 
sentence version of this. Um, there was a guy, he on, he knew he only had three years with which to work. He wanted to get a message as far as he could. He didn't do a, he didn't do a live stream. He didn't do a conference. He got 12 people together and he walked around with them every day and he told them stories so they could really, really get what he was trying to say. And that when he was gone, they would be able to share it with other people. And just so you'll feel better about hiring, like even he didn't get hiring, right? He, he only got 11 out of 12, right? One of, them, one of them turned out to be not great. But you know what he did? He, he walked around with them in life and said, hey, if you had this much faith, see that mountain? You can make it move. And I know he was like really frustrated. He was like, okay, they didn't get that. I'll tell them a different one. There was a lady. She lost a penny. She searched everywhere, swept her house. And they were like, cool story, man. And he's like, oh, he's like, okay, there was a guy with 99 lambs. And see, here's the thing. It's not about just bringing your APs and dividing out the work. It's bringing your APs together so that you can, so they can understand how to be that ac acolyte for you to take the vision of the school out. And that's how you get your APs to understand not just what to do, but how to do. It's a great example we got set for us 2,000 years later. Two billion people. I don't know. Seems like it worked. Yeah. Wow. You got that, Ray. You got that, Ray. I'm gonna keep moving. I, I see. I see. Dr. Peters is communicating with folks. Uh, but let me. Uh, let me get you up here. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Here we go. Here we go. Um, what's that number? Number. Uh, no. Number four. Where we at? Where we at? Let me. I confuse myself. Bear with me a second while I get rid of that. There we go. All right. Now I'm good. So you said, um, Dr. Peters, you said the assistant principal and new principal's roles are constantly changing. And I certainly agree with that. But what do you, what is your message? Um, as yeah. So my, my clear message here is, uh, and my good friend Brene Brown says, clarity is kindness. To be unclear is to be unkind. Right. Mm. And so the clear message here is we used to hire assistant principals. Uh, and teach them what to do and how to do it. Now we are hiring assistant principals and asking them what they think we should do. There's a difference there. No longer are you accepting a role and coming into the responsibility with uh, people really guiding you through the process. I saw somebody put it in the chat early and it was profound that you need to own your own learning. You need to, to own it. You need to <clears throat> decide what you need um, to continue to learn and grow. And you need to go into these roles without the expectation that people are gonna stand you in a line and point you down the hall, mm -hmm. right? You need to come in ready to go. You, yeah, I, I had an assistant principal once tell me, put me in the game, coach, put me in the game. Put me in the game and and i i put them in the game you know I, I can remember we had 12 teachers out one day and i put him in sign of the substitutes and they only had three so he had to, to cover nine classes and he kept looking at me like what do i do what do i do tell me what to do and i and i walked down the other end of the hall and he got upset but the next day he came to me and said i said to him listen i would never have done that if i didn't think you could you could complete the task and do it well. I would have helped you. So when I say these roles are constantly changing, I spoke to it earlier, where we always look for people with experience and skills and, and all of that. We're now looking for people who are authentic, who are trustworthy, who have integrity. But I look for passion. I look for that Allen Iverson, I don't need the practice, put me in the game and I'm going to score 30 on. <laughs> I look for for those USC women's basketball team members who refuse to be beaten 38 and 0, um, re regardless of the odds. I look for Dawn Staley's of the world who, regardless of my size, I am a giant yeah. leader. Right. So these roles are constantly changing, and we need to be ready and fully equipped to be able to present ourselves in such a way that we understand that each and every day we bring our best stuff. 
Love it. I'm a, I, you know, I think I'm gonna stop it right there as far as the talking points, and um, and then we'll I'll reach out to you, the two of you, so that we can schedule another a part two. I got a whole lot of folks that are coming back for part twos because these can be long. We already in the third. We going we went we're into the third hour now. So uh, but I want to go through these bam impact questions. So I, I'm gonna give you 10 and 10, and then the last one will be for both of you. These are rapid fire, one sentence or one word only. If you find yourself inserting commas, then I'm gonna have to say eh. <laughs> right? too long. These are yeah. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to start off with Dr. Wilson. Is education on the right path for underserved children? No. Can true equity occur in America's schools for black, brown, and other underserved students? Yes, it can. Does Dr. Mark Wilson's work contribute to the progress we desperately need? I pray each day that it will. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? resets are hypothetical and that's like lying to my brain and I'm not going to do that. Ooh, now I ain't never heard that one before 207 weeks and you threw a monkey wrench at me. Um, why do you continue to do this work? I want to be a part of the solution. What fires you up within the work that you do? Service to others. What do you particularly love about the work you do? Seeing from a distance, people prosper. What do you dislike about the work that you do? I spend 150 nights in hotels. Whew. Who are you telling? What has been your greatest victory in this work? Watching someone grow and do great things. And one more, what was your greatest mistake in this work? Being too cocky and thinking I knew more than I knew multiple times. If we had a few hours, I could give you examples. <laughs> Dr. Peters, mm -hmm. what has been your greatest challenge in this work? Whew. Not having enough time to do it. Time has been a challenge. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? Absolutely. We became a national blue ribbon school. I visited the White House in the, wow. with our team. Are you proud of your first year as a principal? No. Who inspires you in the work that you do? God. What are you reading right now? Book, blog, article, tweet, anything. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Um, I am reading by Arthur Brooks from Strength to Strength about the last phase of life and realizing that what got me here won't get me there. Oh, maybe I need to read it. What book would you recommend for our viewers? Who? Leadership Transformation A to Z, What Great Leaders Do, and One by Stephen Peters and Mark Wilson. There you go. What do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? I want people to realize that literacy, that, that, that poverty is the enemy of public education, but literacy is the vaccine for poverty. Mm. That's my platform for the rest of my life. Wow. Wow. Are you satisfied with where you are professionally right now? Absolutely. I own my own time, which makes me wealthy. I don't want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. And I owning your that. time makes you wealthy. I hear that. What could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? Um, wow. Wow that I've faced many in my life. Um, and in some instances, I went through a window. In others, I was bold and courageous enough to knock down the door. What could you say to a viewer out there who's lost their fire? That if you've ever been on fire, you can be lit again. But if you've never been on fire, it'll be hard to light you. Mm. And if Dr. Stephen Peters was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Real. Authentic. And, 
And if Dr. Mark Wilson was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Generous. Love it. That brings us to the end. And let me say to you, uh, to the two, to my two brothers, uh, I appreciate you. This was extraordinary. And, and it was obviously extraordinary to the fam out there. Appreciate you blessing this platform, blessing me. Uh, we have a ritual of how we thank our, our guests and mo the fam members that are regulars already know. They've already started. Hey, folks, hit us up with those emojis. Let them uh, let Dr. Wilson, Dr. Peters know if this was time well spent, if it if it res if the messages were resonated with you, if they were useful, if they add value to your leadership, if you can implement on Monday, um, what it, however however they value your leadership, let us know with the emojis. I see them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Let me get my emoji. I use the authentic emoji, the Louisville Slugger, with my Jackie Robinson jersey. Y'all hit it out the park. You went to bat four times each. Bases were loaded all four times. Grand slams every time you went to bat. So great job. Do amazing work. You've been doing amazing work for a long time. Yeah, keep them emojis coming. I see them. I see them. I see them. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. And uh, just appreciate you. I want you to once again tell the folks um, how they can reach you, how they can book you, how they can get your books, how they can come to your, your events, whatever it is. I'll start off with Dr. Wilson this time. Uh, go ahead, Doc. Let me get that off the screen so see your name. Yeah, it's uh, principal-matters.com. And um, my email is mark.wilson.ga at gmail.com. All right. And if anybody that missed that, just it, they're, they're, it's on YouTube. Once we finish, just rewind. Well, it's on all the platforms. And just rewind and check it out again. Uh, Dr. Peters. Yes, uh, Stephen at thepetersgroup.global is my email website, www.thepetersgroup.global. And follow me on um, Twitter or X at Stephen, S T E P H E N G Peters. There it is, folks. Uh, and, and you want to hit them up on that conference again? Yeah, conference is June 13th through the 16th, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, www.initiative1.com is where you can register. There's a free think tank for leaders every month. Uh, it's very powerful. We have about 100 people sitting in front of us and 1,000 online. First Friday of every month, it's free uh, through our A to Z leadership transformation training. You guys are awesome. I want to thank you for the work you do. And Principal Cafele, we've got you covered in prayer, brother. Travel right. safely. We love you. We honor you and the work that you do. Mark, love you. Great to see love you. you. Uh, there's more work for us to do, so let's get to it. Shout well, out to Eric Austin and Octavius Mulligan, both awesome educators from the great state of Georgia. Lewis Cobb, Coach Powell, good to see you, brother. And all the others that we've run into over the years continue to do great work. God bless you, and to God be the glory. Love it. You brothers, do me a favor. Stay on while I just do my close out and then we, we holler off Mike for a hot second. Hey, folks, I appreciate you being here every week, every week. Numbers have been very strong and uh, just keep on coming. Keep on telling folks because there's always a new generation of folks who come into administration or a new generation who get the idea that they will or the notion that they want to be an administrator, but they may not know that this platform exists. So let them know. We'll be back next week, Saturday at 1055 with week 208. I, 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 we had a session um, several months ago that we didn't finish. So I'm bringing back by popular demand, Jamila, Jamila Hudkirk, Kateria Beasley Payton, and Dr. Casey Shaheed. You may remember them. We had a powerful conversation not long ago. Every Saturday morning, Super Saturday, 10 o'clock, uh, Sean Hurt, Facebook Live for all of these. Dr. Sheikha Houston, Dr. Tammy Taylor with Create and Educate, 1030. And then myself at 1055. We'll see when Josh is going to be back online. But for now, we're Super Saturday. That's the three of us. School Leadership Institute with Principal Kefele, July 9 and 10 in Houston. Make sure you go to principalkefele.com. Scroll down to the announcements. Click the registration uh, link and come on and join me in Houston for two days. And then come on back to Houston, July 18 and 21 for the Black Educators Rock Conference. And I will close that out with my full day, day long leadership seminar. Um, so you can go to rock, 
rockconference.org rockconference.org you know my books i'm not gonna put them on the screen again just go to amazon put in principal baruti kafele b-a-r-u-t-i and get those leadership books right matter of fact you can get the teacher books too while you're there right so get them books and then subscribe to the ap and new principals academy youtube channel a lot of people ask me they say do you record these of course you think we're just coming on here live and and and, and no no documentation no we um they're on youtube they're on facebook they're on twitter but in terms of an archive they're they're on you they're on youtube so go to the ap and new principals academy youtube channel and watch all 207 sessions and that's inclusive of my five part series called becoming a professional speaker five videos nine hours free freaking free right i gave it all away man all them all my secrets man i could i could charge i could make about a hundred thousand dollars a weekend with this content easily 100 people in the room but how right? much does it cost at, 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 at about 100 i mean at about a thousand dollars a person no i'm talking yeah. about now how much is it oh, oh, oh it's freaking free it's freaking free <laughs> It's freaking free. Just go to the channel. You want to you want to become a speaker? Well, I'm giving you my secrets. Just go to the wow. to the channel and watch it. But wow. then you, you might want to have a book with your speaking. So I made the series becoming a best selling author. It's freaking free, right? So just go to the same channel. It's four videos, five hours of content comprised of the planning, the writing, the 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 marketing, the distribution, the publishing. It's there. I'm telling you, let me let me let me just do this real quick. I'm 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 giving you the secrets on how I wrote all these bestsellers, right? I'm, that's that's what I'm doing, right? I'm giving it to you. That's what all the, I can't even hold these things so that you can see all the titles. There's so many. Of them. How I'm much does it cost? Secret, them? huh? How much does it cost them? Oh, it's freaking free. See. <laughs> <laughs> so all, all you, it, the only thing it costs is your time, right? So if, so if you can expend time, then go ahead and check it out. And then lastly, um, almost lastly, make sure you like and follow the AP and New Principles Academy Facebook page. I've been real lax in writing those essays, those uh, commentaries, y'all. You know, I got to take it down sometime. And, and I've been taking it down on Sunday morning outside of doing my two to three mile walk. But uh, I've been taking it down, but I'm going to get to them. But in the meantime, just make sure you like and follow that page. And then lastly, as I always say, your diet. Make sure you're eating right, y'all. Right? Your exercise. Get it in. And your virus and disease precautions. I mean, just just, just move, move right. If you're on the plane, throw the mask on. And if you want to just can't tolerate the mask anymore like me, when you hear the first cough, the first sneeze. Pull out your N95 for the rest of that flight, right? Because uh, it, that's all it takes. It might not be a virus, but it could be something, right? So just precautions. Because if you're not healthy, guess who can't leave your school? And that's the whole point. So do all you have to do, all you've got to do to stay healthy so that you can be in that building leading the staff and students of your school. Enough said, man. Hey, y'all, have a uh, glad you're here. See you next Saturday. Have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist all the way back. Count to three. One, two, three. Bam. <laughs> I'll see y'all next week.